So they began, sorry, so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed unto Seleucia and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Verse 47. For so he had the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, and thou shouldest be for salvation unto the end, unto the ends of the earth. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. In Jesus' name, we may be seated in his presence. Thank you, Lord, for the word that we have read. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, help me to speak with the clarity of speech. Let the favor and the blessing of the Lord be upon each and every individual through the word. In Jesus' name, amen. The theme that we are moving with this year is mandated to make a difference. Mandated to make a difference. Can we all say that? to make a difference. Good. Uh, I am speaking on the series Know Your Mandate. Know Your Mandate. I am going to be teaching this word of God so that uh, each and everyone can actually understand what we are talking about here. Knowing one's mandate is uh, actually knowing self. If you fail to know your mandate, you are living as a stranger to self. You become a stranger to you because you do not know your mandate. You end up being pushed into anything, anyway, anytime because you do not know what you stand for or what you should be doing. Uh, if you are sure about what uh, your mandate is all about, you may refuse and reject and resist temptations. You may stand your ground and resist what others are trying to push you into. Some gave up their mandate because uh, they have been uh, tempted or uh, they have failed to achieve two times or three times. But people who know they are mandated, they soldier on and they stand their ground. And they say, no matter what is happening around me, I am going to continue soldiering on. I am going to continue doing what the Lord has called me to do. Uh, let me refer you to a man called Colonel Sanders. Uh, this guy, uh, he is the founder of KFC. History says he, when he was cooking his fried chicken in Kentucky and trying to register it with one of the restaurants there, they say he was rejected 1,009 times. But he did not give up. He continued approaching restaurants one after the other as he was thinking that uh, this is for me. And it is said uh, the 1010th time is the one that give, gave him his yes moment. And KFC was born. And he died a millionaire. Why? Because he did not give up. Sometimes we fail once, twice, or three times, or five times. Then we say, no, 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 no I, I'm giving up. It's, that doesn't work. No, it's not for me. No, it doesn't uh, you have to be like that. You have to hold on if you know your mandate. You say, I cannot give up on this one. Let me talk to you about uh, uh, Sir James Dyson. The history says he is the inventor of uh, a vacuum cleaner. He built some prototypes about uh, five 1,126 prototypes which were failing. 
And he did it within 15 years. So he did not give up in 15 years. He continued building prototypes, trying this, trying that, trying that. And the 5,127th one did work. And within a short space of time, it transformed him to be net worth about 4.5 billion. Huh? What if he had given up? He was going to die a pauper. Yet God had given him a mandate that was going to give to, to make him rich. So let me subscribe to you today that you don't need to give up when you fail once. You don't need to give up when you fail twice. You don't have to give up when you fail ten times. You need to continue soldiering on. Failure doesn't mean that you don't have a mandate. The Bible says when Paul and Barnabas were assigned to go and preach, their first city to enter to start preaching, they failed to establish a church there. But they did not give up. They were chased out of that city. But they did not, they did not surrender. They had to hold on because they knew that the Lord has given them a mandate to preach the gospel. So if you don't know your mandate, you can easily give up. You can easily surrender. You can easily say, this is not for me. Let me try something else. Or you can actually assign some people to your mandate. Say, maybe it's for so and so or so and so, 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 so. Not for me. Praise the name of the Lord. What is it that keeps others going even in face of impossibilities? This is a question to you. What do you think is the, those people do possess that keeps on helping them to soldier on and to move on when all things and all the odds seem to be against them? Let me help you to answer this question. Number one is actually knowing one's mandate. If you know your mandate, you can actually stand and say, this is what the Lord has commanded me to do. I am going to do it. This is why Paul says on verse 47, where we have read, the Lord has commanded us to do this thing. And he has commanded us to go to the Gentiles, to be a light to the Gentiles. So he could not give up. Why? Because he knew that the Lord has commanded him to do that. So he was saying, I cannot give up because the Lord has commanded me to do it. I cannot surrender because this is what I was called to do. Praise the name of the Lord. So a lot of people, if they know they are mandated, they don't give up. They will stand and say, this is why I was born. I am doing it because this is the reason why I exist. This is the reason why I am alive. So I am going to continue doing it. This is my mission. So when they do it, they say, I am standing in my mission. I cannot give up. I am assigned to make the world a better place. So they say, I am assigned and I was assigned to make the world a better place. Praise the name of the Lord. So each and every one of us has got an assignment, has got a mandate in this world. You only need to make sure that you uh, know it and follow it. In Jesus' name. Even if it is not rewarding at the moment, sometimes there are things that we do uh, expecting reward. But sometimes some of the things takes time to reward you. So even if the things that you were mandated to do are not rewarding you at the moment, you don't need to give up. You might try and diversify while you, 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 you finance your area of your calling. 
you might do other things that brings instant cash. Yet, your mandate, you continue pursuing it. Even if people around you cannot accept what you are saying or what you are doing, you are not called or you are not, you have not been mandated by people, but it is God who gave you that mandate. So you need to stand and say, no matter what is happening around me, I am going to do it. Let me tell you, don't think that people who are doing those things, they are superhuman. No. They are just determined. There are things that we, you feel, everyone has felt it. Every winner has felt it. Every champion has felt it. Every successful person has felt it. The urge to give up. When you do things, it crops up within you. You feel the urge to give up. You feel the urge to surrender. Everyone, at one time, they have felt it. But they have to say to themselves, God has called me for this. And I'm going to do it. No matter what is happening. Praise the name of the Lord. Paul once wrote and say, I know how it is to sleep on an empty stomach. I know how it is to be persecuted. I know how it is to preach without food. I know how it is to work without money. But I have found all these things worthless for the sake of the gospel. Let me say to you, I know also how it is to prepare for a sermon why do you don't feel like sometimes you prepare for a sermon and you say if only I had felt this uh, before time I would have asked somebody to preach today but let me do it anyhow because this is what I was mandated to do I was called specifically for this work I know how it is to prepare someone after sleeping on, a, on an empty stomach. Then you say, Lord, speak. And when he is speaking through me, sometimes you think that I am preaching to you, but actually, I will be also preaching to myself because the same message that I am preaching is actually ministering to me also. This is why the Bible says the one who stands before people actually shares with the, the, the listeners. Amen. So when you know your mandate, when you know your mandate, you cannot give up easily. Oh, yes. I've told you about the Sanders. No matter what was happening around him. And sometimes people, when they reject you, they don't reject you politely. They say whatever words, careless words. Get out of here. I don't want to see you here again. <laughs> yeah. And one thing special about these people who do, does these things, they count the times. They record the times. How many times today? Today I visited five. They record. The next day, they visited seven. They record it. So they know that I have been rejected 1,009 times. And only 1,010th time I was given a yes moment. And KFC was born. And it's now worldwide. People are now using vacuum cleaners. But the inventor had to go through a tough time for 15 years building prototypes that does not work. 5,126 times building prototypes failing to work. On the 5,127th time he succeeded. 
How many times have you tried? You are about to give up. You are about to surrender. You are about to say no. No more. Not anymore. How many times have you, have you tried? Praise the name of the Lord. So others do not give up because they know they are mandated. They know they have been created for that. They know they have been called for those specific things. And you must know what you have been mandated to do by the Lord. Secondly, they do not give up because they are being led by the Spirit of God. They are being led by the Spirit of God. Acts chapter number 13 verse 4 says, And the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit had to send them who Paul and Barnabas it was the Holy Spirit who sent them so they were not given a mandate by people they were not mandated by people but it was the Holy Spirit that had to send them out it was the Holy Spirit that had to release them into the world so when you are being led by the Spirit of God you cannot easily give up because I like the Holy Spirit. Why? Because when he sends you out, he say, I am sending you. Yet when you are going, he goes with you. Wherever you are going to be, he is going to be with you. Praise the name of the Lord. Paul and Barnabas were sent by the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to be sent? It means to be given a mandate to carry out. It means to be given a parcel to carry to another place. So they were given a parcel to go into the world and deliver it. So they were sent with a parcel of salvation to the world. What does it mean to be sent? It means to be given authority to do or say. So they were speaking on behalf of the Holy Spirit. They were messengers of the Holy Spirit. They were ambassadors of the Holy Spirit. So whatever, sometimes the people who are sent, they stay under the shadow of the one who has sent them. Or behind the name of the one who has sent them. This is why you hear Paul says, it is not I that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So, when the Holy Spirit sent Paul and Barnabas, number one, he had to wait with them. Number two, he gave them the words. So, when you are sent and when the Holy Spirit is there, hunger is sustainable because the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is there. Persecution is bearable because the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is with you. So when you are sent, waiting, waiting is not a problem. But you can enjoy the waiting period. Sometimes people give up when they are within the waiting period. Praise the name of the Lord. I have seen people uh, going to see someone in their office. They are told, wait, they are still busy inside. Then they wait and wait and wait till they say, ah, because of my time, tell them that I will, go, I will come again some other time. I'm going. They don't like waiting. Waiting is very difficult. Sometimes even when we ask people to testify or give us testimonies, they tell us how they succeeded eventually. But they don't explain to us how they handled the waiting period. Because the waiting period is difficult. I want you to tell me how to behave myself, how to handle myself when I'm waiting for success, when money is not in scarce, when uh, I do not get a job. How do I wait? I need someone who can tell me how to wait when I'm expecting a husband. 
My peers are all getting married. So how do I wait in this period? I want you to tell me how to wait. When things are not working out. So it is the power of the Holy Spirit that gives you the ability to continue holding on as you wait for him to do things in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He also tells you what to avoid and who to avoid. For he is always there with you. There are things that you need to avoid. There are people whom you need to avoid for you to achieve your mandate. But it is the duty and the work of the Holy Spirit to tell you whom to avoid and what to avoid. Especially in this season that we are living in. There are some challenges that we are facing because of peer pressure. Because of social media, because we are increasingly become, becoming a global village, whatever is happening in China is affecting what is happening in Zimbabwe. What is happening, happening in Zimbabwe is also affecting what is happening in the UK. What is happening in the UK is also affecting what is happening in the USA. Because we are increasingly becoming a global village. Fashion, dressing, friends, things and actions. We dress according to her, what we saw on Instagram. We want hairstyles according to what we saw on Instagram. We follow friends on social media and they influence our daily living. We desire to be like them, not to be like Christ. We desire to follow them, not to follow Christ. We desire to be identified by them, not to be identified with Christ. Why? It is because we want to fit in to be like the world. Yet the world, the, 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 the word of God commands us to be different. The word says, do not be conformed to the standards of this world, but be ye transformed. Be different. Yet we allow and we permit the world to influence us, to dictate the pace of our life. Where is the Holy Spirit? Do we have him in our hearts? Do we have the power of the Holy Spirit within us? Yet we allow ourselves to be influenced. You see, when you are sent, you represent the one who has sent you. Whenever you do things, whenever you speak, the one who has sent you has spoken. Huh? Whenever you, uh, they see you doing things, their minds start thinking about who has sent you. This is why when they see, the, when the media saw a pastor misbehaving or doing all sorts of things, because they know that you have been sent, they started thinking about the one who has sent you. And they start asking questions. Why are you doing this if you are a pastor? How can you do this if you are a man of God? Because they are thinking of the man behind you. The one who has sent you. So if you have been sent by the Holy Spirit, people start thinking of the Holy Spirit and say, when you speak, they say, the Spirit is speaking. When you do things, they say, is this the work of the Holy Spirit? Or is something else? And whenever you are being sent by somebody, you develop the likeness of the one who has sent you. 
Because there is constant interaction between you and the one who has sent you. If you have been sent by the president, you go out there and you do whatever you have been assigned to do, then you come and report back. Then he gives you another assignment. You go out again, you come and report. So they, they develops a likeness between you and him. So if you have been sent by the Spirit of God or by Jesus himself, you develop a likeness. This is why believers were called Christians. Because those who saw them, they said they are like Christ. They are doing whatever they are doing, just like Christ. If you have been sent, you don't like what the one who has sent you do not like. Whatever he doesn't like, you don't like it also. You do what he does. Whatever he does, you do it. You live under his shadows. It's not about you, but it is about him. You know that it's not about my life, but it's about his life. It's not about my kingdom, but it's about his kingdom. It's not about my future, but it's about his work. Praise the name of the Lord. You become different by him. It is not you who initiates difference. But it is him who starts where to start it. You have to be different by him. It is you, it is him who makes you different. So that when you advocate for difference, people around you already see difference in you. You can advocate, you cannot advocate for difference when you try to fit in. Or when you try to be like the people whom you are trying to transform, does it work? It doesn't, doesn't work. They need to see the difference in you. Then they will ask you about the difference that they are seeing in you. I once showed you on several occasions when I was traveling, uh, maybe I would try to use uh, public transport. Uh, you get into a car, they say, huh? Are you a pastor? Then I say, why did you say that there's ah, something different with you? Something, something. So they need to see something different in your life. Because you must be the difference that the world is demanding or that the world is desiring. You must be different. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. As Paul was preaching. The Bible says they uh, get to another city uh, and there uh, there was this uh, uh, high profile person who wanted to hear the word of God. So he had to send for them and called them so that they can explain the word of God to him. But this man was a, a friend to a witch doctor in the area. And the witch doctor did not want this man to receive the word. So, what did he do? He tried to resist Paul and Barnabas to block them so that they cannot speak to this man. But when Paul saw that, the Bible says he was full of the Holy Ghost. And he said to the man, because you are resisting anything that is good from the Lord, you shall be blind for a season. And from that time, he became blind. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was in charge. The Holy Spirit was in uh, control. It was... Uh, mandating Paul to do whatever he was doing. So whenever you are doing things, let the Holy Spirit be with you. Stand by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, victory is in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Resistance can be taken off if the Holy Spirit is with you. Partners can be brought to you if the Holy Spirit is working with you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When you know your mandate, you must also know 
the commandments that goes with the mandate. The commands or the instructions that goes with the mandate. The command is not the mandate, but it is just the instructions that helps to uphold the mandate. So whenever God gives you a mandate, he gives you commands or instructions that helps you to uphold the mandate. Praise the name of the Lord. So Paul was mandated to carry the gospel to the Gentiles. That was his mandate. To the Gentiles, to the kings, and to the children of Israel. That was his mandate. But he was given some instructions, some instructions or some commands that were going to be uh, working as anchors to the mandate. Praise the name of the Lord. You hear him on verse 47, he said, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. What did he command you, Paul? He commanded us to be light to the Gentiles and a sign of salvation unto the ends of the world. What does it mean? It means that Paul was, mande was, was instructed to be a torch bearer to show the Gentiles the way of salvation. So whatever he was, the Gentiles was, were supposed to follow him and be like him because he was the torch bearer showing them the way to salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Paul was to make sure that he became the light and the Gentiles would follow unto salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Right. Whatever the Lord had commanded you to do, there are some commandments or some instructions to it. Listen to me. Whatever the Lord has commanded you to do, there are some commandments or instructions that are to it. Don't mess it up. Are we still together? Amen. Don't mess it up. Yeah. Don't kill the Lord's mandate by ignoring the instructions. Some of our instructions that we were given by the Lord through the Holy Spirit, number one is don't love the world. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, please don't love the world. Please don't love the world. We have got people who loves the world so much to the extent that whatever the world is offering, they want it. Whatever the world is doing, they would want it. Especially the generation that we have these days. Whatever the world is doing, they want it. Whatever the, law, the, the, the world is embarking on, they want to be like them. But the Bible, the command, if you want to fulfill your mandate, the Bible says, don't love the world. Don't love the world. Don't kill the mandate by ignoring the instructions. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Number two, the Bible says, love the Lord with all your heart. Love the Lord with all your heart. If you love the Lord, then there are things that you need to forego because of your love for God. But in this generation that we are in, people love things more than God. And people love things more than people. They love some kind of association that are weird. Yet the Lord commanded us, we must love the Lord, our God, and we must love our neighbors. The Bible says, 
Do not commit adultery. Do not steal and say things like that. But these are the very things that are happening around us in our generation. Why? Because we do not want to follow Christ. The Bible says in the last days, seven women will get hold of one man and they will say, we will eat our own food. We will buy our own clothes. We will do our own things. What we want is to be called by your name. And this is actually an example of the church today. There are churches, a lot of them, who are getting hold of Christ and say, we, we are going to eat our own food. We are going to dress our own clothes. We are going to do our own things. But what you want is your name. So they claim to be Christians. Yet whatever they are doing is their own. They are doing their own things. Yet they claim to be Christians. Yet they claim to be associated with Christ. This is what is happening in our time. But I want us to be different. Kairos what mission? I want us to be different. The church of God. I want us to be different. How can we be different? If we know our mandate, we can be different. If we can invite the Holy Spirit, we can be different. Let him take charge of our lives. Let him take, take charge of our uh, of all the instructions that we were given. Let him take charge of you as a person. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the Holy Spirit be with you always. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, when you speak, you speak under the action of the Holy Spirit. When you pray, you need to pray under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because it is him that causes transformation. Because it is him that changes situations around us. In the name of Jesus Christ, when he is around us, we can be different when we when he is with us. We can be different when he is working you know, or dwelling within us. We can be different. I want us to be different, Church of God. In Jesus' mighty wonderful name, no matter what is happening around us, no matter the world is getting rotten, but we want to be different in the name of Jesus Christ. I want somebody who can say, I don't want to be conformed to the standard of this world, but I want to be transformed and be different. Friend, in Jesus' mighty wonderful name, those people who are indulging, let them, them indulge, let them do whatever they are doing. But as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. In Jesus' mighty wonderful name, I want someone who is committed, who, who, who says within their hearts, let the Holy Spirit take control of my life. Let the Holy Spirit take charge of my life. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The time has come for us to be different. The time has come for us to be different. If you want to see the head of the Lord in your life, be different. Allow the Holy Spirit to be in charge of you. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We are different not because we cannot do what they are doing but we choose to be different. Hmm? I have got a mouth. I can still go out there and propose to any other women out there but I chose to be different. You can go out there and prostitute just like any other. But it is by choice to be different. So when you choose to be different, don't be lukewarm. Don't be lukewarm. Go all the way. Get into it. I want us to refuse Pharaoh's suggestions he said to Moses, you can go, but do not go very far. Yeah. You can go, but you leave your children, you leave your cattle, your sheep, your gold here. Just go. 
But Moses had to refuse and say, we cannot do that. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone is going. Yes. And everything that belongs to us is going. Because when we go there, we do not know what our Lord is going to demand from us. So we are taking everything we are with us. We want to go deep into it. In Jesus' name. We don't want to be lukewarm when it comes to serve the Lord. We want to go all the way. When it comes to pray, we want to go all the way. When it comes to preaching, we want to go all the way. When it comes to witnessing, we want to go all the way. Let the Holy Spirit take over. Let the Holy Spirit be with us. In Jesus' mighty name, for them, Paul and Barnabas were led by the Spirit of God. So we want the Spirit of God to lead us and to help us do it. In Jesus' mighty Lord, for name, because of our time, I want us to stand before the living God. We want to pray and say, Lord, release the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to go with us. It's not about us going by ourselves, but it's about you leading the way. It's about you taking charge. In Jesus' name, as I am speaking right now, just raise your voice and begin to pray. Whatever you are going to be doing, whatever.